Irish whiskey news and interviews. Now, it's time for your hosts. Hello, 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 and welcome to a brand new episode of the Middle Club Podcast, brought to you by Postal Radio. As always, I am your host, Matt Healy, or Postilled Matt, and I am delighted to be joined once again by my other Matt podcasting host. How are you doing, Matt Jones? What's going on? I'm doing very well. I'm excited for the next couple of weeks. Should be a good couple of weeks for Irish whiskey, especially. So, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. For those out there who don't remember uh, your online persona and where to find you on social media, why don't you give yourself a little plug? Well, indeed. Yeah, I am Matt. I'm known around the internet as the Whiskey Nerd. I review whiskeys. I make whiskey cocktails for myself and my lovely wife, Rose, who I'm slowly turning into a bit of a whiskey nerd herself, but she started off as quite a bit of a noob and has, has grown to appreciate all the wonderful things that you can do with Irish whiskey. Well, I'm delighted to have you here with me. Um, again, this is the Middle Cup podcast brought to you by Potstilled Radio. Uh, you can find all information about potstilled.com and Potstilled Radio at potstilled.com. And of course, on social medias, it's usually potstilled underscore, um, except for the likes of Facebook, where it's at potstilled. Um, I am delighted to be saying a very big thank you to our sponsors, who are, of course, for this episode, irishmalts.com, who are your one-stop shop for Irish whiskey, gin, butching, and other things that will be delivered straight to your door anywhere around the world where it is legal to do. So check them out there on irishmalts.com. Uh, so, Matt, um, we had a little hiatus. We are back. Um, I well, We're going to be talking all about uh, whiskey festivals and, of course, in the world of Irish whiskey, there is no bigger festival uh, than Whiskey Live Dublin. We'll be talking about that in a moment. Um, but funnily enough, we ended up on a little out because I was at a different whiskey festival and I ended up injured. But I'm well and I am back, so I'm delighted to be here talking about, as I said, the most important uh, Just in festival. time as well. Wouldn't be good to be injured for Whiskey Live. Exactly. Um, is this the, the biggest event on your calendar per year? Because I know uh, from both a professional and a, an enthusiast point of view, it's the biggest one on mine. It is, yeah. It's it's fantastic. I mean, like, it's organized, it's run by, like, the, the guys at the Celtic Whiskey Shop. If you know anything about Irish whiskey, you're familiar with the Celtic Whiskey Shop. It's a great the community vibe. They're the people there. They know what they're at. And it's just a great to see the enthusiasm, as you said, for people, for brands, for people who like to either review it, taste it, drink it, or brand new to the scene. It's just great to see the amount of liveliness there is in that uh, festival because it runs over four sessions it runs over two days you get your kind of industry people talking you get your enthusiasts and you get your beginners it's a great way to kind of enjoy and kind of just get to know all the different brands because there's so many different brands out there especially recently with loads of Irish whiskey brands popping up and you might just not be able to know them all but it's a great opportunity to taste everything it's just a fantastic event yeah, it's funny from from my my point of view. I've been working at whiskey festivals around the world for the last about ten years, and usually it's a mixture of you know Scotch, a little Irish, maybe some Americans, Japanese, whatever. Whiskey Live Dublin is very unique in the sense that it is a, particularly in the you know in the kind of fledgling years, dominantly almost one hundred percent Irish whiskey uh, focused. Um, Went through a few years. There was we were in the mansion house or in the kind of whatever the the, the grand ballroom there where it kind of kicked off. I moved to Dublin Castle and now we're in the RDS for the second year. Much bigger venue, a lot more people able to go, but it's still holding a very strong um, Irish whiskey uh, holdout for it. Um, I know in previous years uh, some Scotch whiskey brands would have come um, and had. A shock, I would say, to some of the brand ambassadors and sales managers because um, this is the first time that they're going to an international festival and being incredibly quiet just because it's the fans are so hyped up on Irish whiskey. It's quite funny. But I know now that we're in the RDS, we're seeing a lot more people, a lot more tickets. Um, it's mm -hmm. very much more accessible as well for kind of the casual uh, interest in consumers. And you're seeing that interest spread across the Americans, the Scotch, the Japanese, and so on. Um, were you at any of the festivals in the previous uh, venues, or or did you? Uh, no, uh, the last the last year's one in the RDS that was my, my first one. I was unfortunately unable to go in previous years, but it's just it's something that I've always like wanted to be. It just calendar didn't work out, or I was out of the country, or just unable to go. Unfortunately, but this year is my second year there, and it's actually gonna be my first year working at the festival as well. So I'll be able to enjoy it one day and, and work at another day because I'm on the Irish Whiskey Society, and I'll be there on the stand on the Friday 
if you're around, come by the Archery Society, say hi, and just kind of get to know us a little bit better. I'm sure you'll have some of the society bottlings on the table as well. Yes, there's a one bottle in particular, Marrowbone Lane. Have you ever heard of it? It's, uh, yeah, yeah, I've definitely heard of it. Yeah. yeah, it's one of those ones that it's seemingly mythical. There's, a, and I've been told that we're bringing a few bottles to try. It'll be my first time ever trying it because those bottles are either impossible to find or incredibly expensive if they ever do come up on auction sites. Because there's only, a, I think there's only a few hundred of them ever made. So, yeah, there was 500 made back in 2016. Um, and it would Peter Peter White uh, was the president at the time of the uh, Irish Whiskey uh, Society, and uh, it was a big committee at that time putting together that bottling, um, and a, you know a historic bottling, which was kind of cool. Where a lot of people were doing twenty six or nineteen sixteen commemorative bottles by just putting nineteen sixteen on the bottle. Um, Peter White and Finan O'Connor went to, and wrote a liquid brief. Uh, that went to one of the biggest distilleries and got a pot still in the style of what it would have been like having a Bow Street whiskey in 1916. Um, so it was incredibly cool. Limited to two per person. I think it was 125 quid a bottle at the time. I might be misremembering that number. But I think it was 125 quid a bottle. And then that was it. You got you got two bottles and, that, and then, then that was it. All the allocations were done. It was incredibly sought after and still is to this day. Um, yeah. Still have one bottle left. I drank one bottle. I have one bottle left and it's unopened. It's going to remain unopened for remain quite a while. For a while, I'd imagine. Yeah, I, I just heard it's just a fantastic bottle, as well with the history element of it there. I mean, we've done some great bottlings recently in the uh, society. There's like good commemorative bottlings and good, but that one, Marabona, does have a, a special place in people's hearts. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a cult following. Uh, yeah. It's very different, though, as well. Like, it's, it's very heavy uh distillate it's very uh it's very thick it's very oily it's very spicy it has a very strong kind of sherry backbone to it as well so it'll be very uh, atypical of what irish whiskey consumers can it, uh, know of whiskey in 2023 so it's a very interesting kind of um departure into the past as well um yeah. for, for that whiskey um, that's one of the things that is great about events like this that are you know obviously you don't want to be going up to every brand every a brand ambassador and saying what have you got under the table that's a bit special or a bit different but sometimes they do have something that's that bit special they want to show off maybe it's new maybe it's not fully finished yet it could be a, a cast sample and they want to get kind of you know people's opinions on what that whiskey is like so it is great to have the opportunity to show off something that you, you're proud of and i think that's one of the great things about the festivals especially these days in irish whiskey when you've got so many distilleries that maybe they've got products that are coming up of age that are almost old enough or maybe they think they're about ready to release and they can get a bit of a sense from the consumer about what they're producing, what the consumer's kind of reactions to them are. Mm -hmm. I mean, pretty much everyone, anyone and everyone who, who is in the Irish whiskey industry will be there um, if they can be. Um, I had a look through the, the exhibitor list and it's a, it's pretty much a who's who and a, and a number of people that people would know. Uh, and, and a lot of new people, like you said, but it is um, important. They're not long session. I mean, they're probably about four hour long sessions um, as international whiskey sessions can go. It's average length, I guess. Um, but there's a lot that go on uh, in these and it is great to come with a plan. Um, for you going last year as your, as your first time into Whiskey Live, do you think you did some things right? Do you think you did some things wrong? Or, or I was, what? I think... I think I was a bit over ambitious. I mean, I, I went through uh, the exhibitor list, as you said, there's like a hundred stalls or something like that. Each one has, some stalls have multiple brands at them or multiple bottlings at them. So I said, right, I, I took the, the list. I was there for one session. So I took the list, cut it in half and said, which are the ones I really want to go to? Which are the ones I really want to try? And when I got about 10, 15 stands through, I said, okay, I need to cut the rest of it down again because there's just, there's no way you can taste it all in one session, especially if you're going and you're drinking, you, you want to try a lot of things. So I think definitely go prioritize who you want to taste, who you want to see, especially the brands like last year, Gold Spot was on offer from uh, Michelin Sons at the area, but there's a huge launching, launching there's launch. yeah. yeah. So if you want, if you know that there's something you want to try, hit there early, otherwise you might have happened to go to a queue and then you waste time at your festival and always Drink loads of water and take a break in the middle for food. That was, I think, my saving grace last year. Bit of a food break in the middle, kept me going. Yeah, I mean, for I've worked at and attended hundreds of whiskey festivals around the world. I literally just arrived home last night at about midnight from one in France. 
Um, and the sessions can move quickly. Um, I definitely think prioritizing, particularly Whiskey Live, where there is this excitement and fervor around the event and how many people go with it with the A game. Not not quite the same as other international festivals because Whiskey Live is, you know, you know, Celtic Whiskey Shop do an amazing job um, with the festival. But because they go with the A standard, this is the creme de la creme of the industry. Everyone goes with what you said, new stuff, old stuff, and everything in between. Prioritizing is is key. Um, and you don't have to drink everything that's in your glass. I know that sounds stupid, but yeah. you will likely get poured, a, you know, a half decent measure. Um, if you are planning on hitting 30 stands, that is 30 yeah. drinks uh, at least that you're going to have. It might not be full measures, and I probably would advise against 30 full measures. Um, but prioritizing is is key you know who do you really want to see who are you going to spend time with particularly at the beginning if you're there doors open if you know you really want to go see you know starward distillery from australia or you have to go see cologne or the lads in two stacks i would you know go go early go go to who you want to see straight away because that'll be the place and time when they'll have someone to be able to talk to you and you can spend time being excited um and the brands will be excited because yeah. the start of the session. <laughs> and like that's that's one thing as well. Like, don't be awkward to be excited. I mean, like you're there for a reason. Like last year, I, remember I showed up to uh, Cologne early, and it was it was kind of empty still. I was I was early doors, I think. And I was kind of like, oh, I don't mean to be taking up your time, but I was like, no, let's just talk. Let's actually get to know what they're producing. And I'm just kind of they're excited to be there. That you know they're they're warm enough for the day. Just because you know there's nobody else around doesn't mean you can't spend a few minutes talking. But also. Try not to hog time if you're if you're if, if you are in the queue because you know as you said time is limited and sometimes people do need to try everything you do need to you know you know kind of be fair to your fellow patrons at these events yeah i mean agreed um there's a lot going on a lot of moving parts um it is always great to keep an eye on what stands have a queue and don't have a queue if you want to get in and how much time you have to be able to spend with them. But I mean, most of these people who are going to be on the stands are going to be incredibly knowledgeable of their products. They're going to have the time to be able to speak to you, but they might, as you said, you have to be cognizant of those behind you or beside you or whatnot. Um, so, but it's a lot of fun. Um, I think it's, there's always those who get over ambitious. Um, there's always, you know, the, the person that ends up like wrecked or, yeah. you know, falling over or getting thrown out it's always i always say particularly in whiskey live dublin it's always someone that should know better it's the like you know 55 year old lad in a suit that's come from work yeah. and he's like i drink whiskey all the time i have no problem with this um but you know don't don't be that guy no or don't spend <laughs> like i know i know cologne is a great facility but everything they do is cask strength so don't be spending too much time at cologne with their cask strength samples otherwise you know, you might not, you might be able to get through 10 samples, 15 samples normally, but if you're dealing with cask strength as well, just bear that in mind with how, where your limit is and, you know, what, how, how much you can handle in order to enjoy the rest of it. Because the last thing you want is to have an awful time and not really enjoy the you know, the second half of the, of the festival. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, any any brands you've, you've seen this year that are going to be in attendance that you'd be excited to be trying yourself? Well, there's a few. So, um, Bally Keeves facility, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what, what they're putting out. I know that they've got a few samples that they're maybe not just there yet, but they're planning to release later on in the year. Boan distillery, uh, I, I, I'm, I, I'm full of saying I, I'm a fan of Boan's uh, spirit. You're wearing a jumper right now. Oh, you're not. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, there's some great distilleries. Obviously, Cologne, and the guys at Two Stacks, some great releases being just brought out. And, like, I am actually. Uh, you mentioned Star Wars, and I'm not just like copying, but I am actually a bit of a fan of Star Wars. I think Australian whiskey has a great potential to come out. I mean, we've seen what Cologne are doing with um, Belgrove Distillery in Tasmania. You know, there's there are some good producers down in Australia, and it just like Japan, like it's maybe it's not well well known now, but getting able to taste some of the whiskeys that they're putting out and kind of get in ahead of things, just see what's going on in other parts of the world. I know I'm a big Irish whiskey fan, but you always have to see what's what's going on on the other side of the, the fence. Yeah, I would fun as well for uh, anyone who does want to check out Star Wars, which I would, uh, you know, this is what these festivals are for. Go explore whiskeys you've heard of or not heard of or, you know, uh, have fun with it. Um, the guy who is the European brand ambassador for Star Wars, um, he, he, first of all, his name is Turtle, which is phenomenal. <laughs> his name's Turtle Higgins. 
and he is a paddy. Uh, so he, he's going to have some great stock, and I'm, I'm sure he'll have a lot of fun being home. Um, if I were you, he usually has a bottle of his Star Wars ginger beer cask somewhere around the table. He guards it with his life, uh, but it is an absolutely phenomenal uh, whiskey to try. Um, so I definitely, if anyone's checking at the Star Wars table, tell Turtle I sent you and try that ginger beer cask. Um, anyone, I suppose, looking as well uh, in, you know, Celtic always have their own operation there as well. Uh, you know, and for a lot of the years, they would have done specialty bottlings uh, for the festival. I know they will have their their retail uh, store there for the, some of the specialty bottlings. Um, they it's a massive operation that they put on um, between the the actual organization. Uh, the load in happens the day before. No one gets to see any of the nitty gritty on the back end, but all of the teams uh, from the bill crews and the distilleries and everything putting everything together the day before. And Celtic are hurting us all like <laughs> sheep uh, to make sure we all get in on time and the passes are sorted and then there's no cars blocking the entrances, etc. So. Uh, Celtic very- also do their is it their dream bar where you can try sample you can you can well not try you can buy samples of some very rare or expensive bottles so it's also a great opportunity like you might not be able to find a sample of this in any bar around the world well, you, you, the only other option you have is to buy a bottle but maybe only maybe you wouldn't be able to buy it if you enter a lottery so it is a great opportunity to even if it might not be a free sample to actually try something that you might not otherwise maybe ever be able to try exactly a lot of those bottles coming from the celtic whiskey bar and larder in clarney where you'd see some of the rarest bottles of irish whiskey in the world opened on the back bar and available for purchase uh samples of the bottles not not the bottles themselves um i think for me it, it's going to be an interesting one i know we mentioned boan distillery uh they are doing a three drams takeover this week uh, to launch three of their new products um which they're going to be displaying um at at whiskey live i'm sure they'll be very excited about it they have their whistler dark symphony um which I believe is a blended whiskey in uh, kind of re-toasted uh, bur- ex-bourbon barrels, um, which is a, a kind of a twist on an STR idea. Um, they have a 10-year-old single malt in uh, French Richard, oak. Yeah, French oak, re- Richard Red Wine, and then um, El Misterioso. Uh, which is I love there. the name of that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it comes from the sherry. So yeah. it's a 16-year-old single malt in Palo Cortado casks, and Palo Cortado is is known as the you know the mysterious one. Um, it's a style of sherry that's almost accidentally made. Um, so I, I'm sure they'll have a huge display of those at, at Whiskey Live with their kind of very famous oak tree and four-sided bar um, in the middle of, of Whiskey Live. Um, have you heard of any, um, I suppose, special bottlings or, or any kind of new make under the table uh, that'll be going on at, at this? Uh... I've heard a, f- a few um, a few brands have just been saying, they're just like, oh, we've got something special that um, I know uh, Garden County Distillery, they have, they've been teasing on their um, Instagram, like, oh, that they have, a, an, I think, an Oloroso cask poll that they'll have available it might be one of the first releases that they're going to actually put out because they've been, you know, obviously using source stock. So, Oh, uh, they're still using source. Like they're only setting up their silly, but there's new whiskeys that they're they're putting out. So I haven't heard exactly what's under the table of a few distilleries, but there's a few others that I'm quite excited to see what they're doing. Yeah, and, and I see you have something in the glass, so I'm gonna pour myself <laughs> something. Wait, wait, let's get a let's get a. Oh, hang on, let me try that again. That was that was that was. You always have to have the cork pop. <sighs> it's not a, not a, not a great cork pop. That's all right. We won't we won't hold the Americans to count on that one. Um, yeah, the, you mentioned before about the, the, the whiskeys under the tables, um, Michael Cowman, uh, who many people will know in the whiskey world has, uh, his famous, uh, do's and don'ts of, of whiskey live and whiskey festivals that he was putting out the, the last couple of weeks. Um, there's always some funny ones, but one of the ones that, you know, the, there's a classic one of, of whiskey festivals of running up to a booth and kind of waving your your glass at the yeah. the uh, exhibitor and saying what, what's your most expensive what's the oldest whiskey what's on, what's under the table um usually a lot well particularly the under the table stuff uh it's it's one of those things it's like uh, it doesn't exist when asked for um but if you don't if you engage if you engage with the the brand um 
then it exists. It's like Schrodinger's. Um, it is sometimes hard to actually ask that. If it, let's say it's a brand you're very familiar with and it's yeah. you, you've, got, you've tasted everything on the table and you are trying to prioritize, you know, not get yourself like, like in, a, in a bad situation by the end of the, the few hours. Sometimes it can be a bit hard to go up and just ask for something. And as you said, like you got to engage the brand, you got to talk to them and just kind of treat them like people don't just go up, wave the glass and say, what have you got? Give us it and go away. Because at the end, they, the generally the under the table samples, they're going to be limited. Like I said, Maribone Lane, we have, or if we have it, wink, wink, it'll be <laughs> very, <laughs> it won't be just like anyone get, comes up and gets, gets a warm because these things are limited. They might be cast balls, they might be pre release. So you kind of, even if it's a brand you're familiar with, you can't just say, go up and say, oh, I've tasted everything. Give us, give us something new because who wants well, to do that? I mean, I mean, I, I would, I would disagree slightly. Um, it, I don't think it hurts when you're engaging with whether you know the person behind the counter or not to rock up and say, "Hey, how's it going? Love, you know, whatever it might be, Garden County. I've tried everything. You, you know, your core range. Do you have anything new? Anything coming out soon or what?" And then you can kind of go into a conversation that way, where that might be the point at which they go, "Actually, you know, I do have something, or I have a." A mysterioso or i've got a new single pot still coming out or whatever or i've got something under the table because that at least has the engagement whereas if you come up cold you're just like exactly. right what special shit do you have it's like none it's all special yeah. you know <laughs> um, it's 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 always a it's always an interesting one um i did learn something all, all over the weekend though i learned i learned a couple of new uh uh, French phrases uh, while at, uh, exhibiting in, in the Whiskey Festival in France. So holding my glass out here in front of you as, as a punter um, over over the counter for our whiskey to be poured into, very politely, I've engaged and we're now pouring whiskeys. Yeah. And the French are um, funny because sp spittoons are everywhere. It's a very normal thing. They're very used to it. You don't have to drink everything you're given. Um, but I learned a new French phrase when they when you pour too much in the glass, they just go... <laughs> <laughs> which I found was an amazing uh, new use of the French language. Um, or the other one, which is one that will do me, it will, for the, my entire life is something I'm going to hate, is you pull the glass uh, in front of you like this, you pour, you know, holding it out for the exhibitor to pour into, and they've got the, you know, the, the whiskey bottle uh, lined over the glass, pouring in, and then they just raise the glass. Like you pull, almost pull the glass out of the way while you're still pouring. You're like that is the least helpful way <laughs> the absolute least helpful way to in show me that you don't want that much um and it is incredibly annoying uh, and i get it at a lot of festivals and it's definitely something that i know other whiskey masters also loathe um yeah. but whiskey festivals are fun uh, there are engaging people there are um all types of people love whiskey as well you know yourself yeah. and myself are quite extroverted people um and a lot of whiskey ambassadors are kind of type A extroverts as well. Um, one of the, my favorite things being on the exhibiting side of the stand is these people that come over and they are introverts. And obviously introverts love whiskey also, um, but aren't always like enthused or it, it, maybe not, not so much enthused, but giving back in the conversation. So I'll be like, oh, this is our whiskey and this is what it tastes like. And here's some fun notes. And the person just like, okay, and, you know, half leave me alone. And at that point, I never know what to do. I've been doing this for ten years in a row. I'm always like, I don't it know. It's fun to more. draw those people out. If you, yeah. if you, it's hard. You kind of have to play it by ear because sometimes you know you put them on the spot and then no, I don't like that. No, I absolutely don't want you to talk to me. Or they're, you know, you can you can play out like, oh, have you tasted it before? Does this remind you of anything? And it's just that. Being an extroverted person, engaging with really introverted people, I always have to walk a very delicate line because I'm never sure <laughs> where where that line is. Am I bothering you, talking to you, or are you enjoying this? Because I am i don't want this to be uncomfortable. I just want you to enjoy your whiskey. If you have a question, don't feel weird about asking me. Go for it. Um, and one thing that always does actually do my head in whiskey vessels, someone comes over and goes, I have a stupid question. For No. Yeah. They're, they're there's not stupid answers. There's no stupid questions. <laughs> there's it's not a stupid question. And I assure you, if you have a question about whiskey, you come up with it at a whiskey festival. We're you know, you're at a whiskey festival. All the flavor makers and creators and brand ambassadors and owners and distillery managers and everything are in front of you. It's the time to ask the question if you want to. Um but 
that I get that. And then it's always, and the worst thing is if someone says I've got a stupid question, it's always a really relevant question. Um, <laughs> but also if you think you've, you have a question that you don't know the answer to, then ask. Cause the, I assure you one, I've already been asked it about four times. Uh, yeah. And two, about four other people around you wondering the same thing. Cause I'll just be sit there talking about mash bills or, you know, fucking lipids or PPMs mm-hmm. that everyone knows what I'm talking about. And suddenly yeah. you've had a 20 minute conversation about mash bills and someone's like, well, hang on, what? what's a mash bill? You're like, oh, I should have started with that. <laughs> yeah. Look, I, uh, on, on the day I'm going there for, for just myself, I'm actually bringing a few friends who are completely new to the, the idea of whiskey, never mind a whiskey festival, but I've, I convinced them all to come along. And it's it's be seven or eight uh, just women who are brand new to the, in my my wife's friends as well and some some other oh, half and half right so we've <laughs> so we got ten of us walking around. Seven or eight women on your own, no? Oh, I know, right? But it'll just be one of those events where because they I had a little whiskey taste in my house, tried a few different whiskeys. People, some of them liked some of them, some of them didn't like the others. And I said, you know, it's a great way because whiskey can be an expensive hobby if you want to pick it up, if you want to try and get into it. it you know, you could buy a bottle. For 60 70 euro it's a it's a stinker maybe to you to your palate you don't like it and it can be expensive if you have a 60 70 euro bottle that just it's just sitting there so I said you know what we should do we should come along to whiskey live dublin thinking that they were going to say no thinking they were gonna say you're a madman and they all said yes so we all bought tickets and they're all gonna be coming along and it's just gonna be one of those things where you can go around and i, I, I love seeing people discover something that they like whether it's a new whiskey whether it's sometimes some of the stands will have, uh, I, I sold one uh, of them on it because I told them that one of the stands has cupcakes with whiskey icing on the top. And they oh, well, <laughs> if there's food, I, if there's food, I can have. Uh, so it's just, it's great to see people kind of, as they like, kind of come alive, come out of their shell a bit and just discover something that they like. So it's, it's just, it's a great fun time. Yeah. One, one of the things that, that I it used to be a thing that people would bring like pocket books, whiskey people use, you, you love pocket books for a very long time. Now I see a lot of is um, people will try something that they like um, and then they will take a photo of it to remember yeah. it later. Because particularly one, you're probably going to go to 15, 20 different stands. Each stand's going to have three to five things to show you. And you're going to be, you know, four hours in and 15 samples of whiskey in, not full glasses. Um, you're going to forget. Um, yeah. So taking photographs of things that you liked is a great a great way to remember on the far end excuse me mm-hmm. cough uh, and it's actually just it's a it's it, that's a great way i found to discover more things you like because one of the, my advice is for uh people who are enjoying uh who are, are going to be coming along with me is that if you find something at one whiskey stand that you like remember it maybe find a bit of the information about it then go to another stand like as you said you can't have everything but you can say i really liked el misterioso you show a picture but oh that's palo potato we actually have something in Palo Cotar and they could show you that and you could get to know what you like. Maybe you just liked that version, that finish. Maybe you'd like a Palo Cotar finish in general, but building up that flavor knowledge, that flavor library in your head over the course of the festival is a great way of doing it because everyone wants to see what they're, everyone also wants to see what the competition are doing. So if you find that someone say likes your Palo Cotar, but they don't like somebody else's, then maybe you're doing something right or maybe they're doing something wrong. Yeah, and and that's the thing is it's it's easy to write off um, some whiskies based on on something you know it might be I don't like sherry casks I don't like peated malts um, like right now I'm not really into peated malts right now I just I'm just I'm not in a peated malt uh, mood but I fucking love the Teeling's Black Pits. Oh, the, the Teeling Black Pits. Have you tried the the cast the cast strength? It's lovely. Yeah. Absolutely lovely, but it's 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 funny that like if you give me any other peated whiskey right now, not really gonna be, and that's just not they're not bad whiskeys. I'm just right now not really in the mood, but black pits absolutely, uh, and then you get other whiskeys that are, you know, could be say uh, Moscatel cask or a Bordeaux red, mm-hmm. and you had a bad experience with the Bordeaux red, and they go, oh, we actually have three Bordeaux reds, and you're like, yeah, not so hot in it. You, maybe give it a notes, you know. Uh, ask to ask to nose the bottle, see what you think. You don't have to sample everything. Um, you know, I was in uh, bar, six, bar 1661 uh, very recently, um, and I'm not mad into spicy cocktails, like the use of, of chili and, and heat in cocktails. Yeah. I like it in food. I don't really like it in, in cocktails. And the guys just said to me, like, come on, we'll make you, we'll make you, some, we'll make you one in those, you know, 
you don't like us, then, you know, move on. Don't worry about it. And they made me one, and it was incredibly balanced. And if they hadn't, you know, invited me to try it, I never would have ordered it, and it was my favorite cocktail of the night. Um, yeah. So, you know, bad experiences can put people off a couple of things, but um, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be too concerned. It, Whiskey Live is a place of exploration and uh, sampling and trying things. Um, and for me as well, for any of the nerds that are out there, my top tip, uh, usually one of the, like, fun experiences is, is meeting the makers and creators um if anyone sees is inclined to to be excited about meeting john teeling um you know affectionately known as the god the godfather of irish whiskey um he has a huge amount of time for people at whiskey live yeah he's uh, so gregarious and just easy to talk to i mean he's also just like I don't, I don't want to call him a, a fount of knowledge, but he is. Like he, if he, I remember talking to him, um, I don't know, a couple of, well, at this point, more, more like a year ago. I was just talking to him. He's like, oh, by the way, do you know what the fastest growing market is in, 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 in Irish whiskey in the world? You just like, rattle off statistics about this, that, and the other and just know it. But then also you see like videos on online of like, oh, this is a, a news report from like Brian Dobson with the setting up of Cooley Distillery. And there's John Healy just there. He's just been around forever. He knows everything about it and as you said he's just he's, he has there's not as much time for anyone who wants to talk to him exactly i think that also means that brian dobson has been around for quite a while she was doing uh, double has been. <laughs> an article on um the founding of, of cooley um it is great though to also see the with the moving of 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 um whiskey live from um dublin castle to the rds um that the food options have grown quite significantly um yeah. So do not be afraid to taste some delicious food while you're there. There's also a lot of coffee options should you need some caffeine. Um, I assume Paddy Irish Whiskey will be there with Irish coffees should people. Uh, that, is yes. kind of, that is kind of their shtick, um, and I'm here for it, being a man who loves good Irish coffee. If you need that caffeine boost at some point, they sell coffees. They, you know, Paddy have their Irish coffees, potentially. I don't, I don't work for Paddy, so I have no idea what they're bringing, but that's what I assume. Um, it would be a missed opportunity if, if Paddy didn't bring the Irish coffee, at, at least a, a stand where they could. They do they do it really efficiently though. Like they, they they've got it down to a like a perfected art. Um, even the size of the cup they serve it in, they have all the ingredients measured out, and I'm always impressed. Of, for however many years I've been able, getting a, an Irish coffee from them, it's always been fantastic. They do like they're in the middle of doing like fourteen different like 14 individual cups and yours still comes out perfect um it's a it's a well-oiled machine clearly um have you seen any of the master classes that are going on no i i haven't seen any of the master classes um uh, this year round um because i'm i'm going to be pretty much head down for all of it working through the through the all all four sessions tell me because the master classes are usually pretty spectacular what what do we have out there for for people to to choose from? I presume they're actually all probably sold out at this point, but I think they're, they're all sold out now at this point. But yeah. there's like there's a great one with Dingle, like whether it be trying their Wheel of the Year series. I, I don't know if you've been even trying the Wheel of the Year series, but it's some really great whiskies that are putting out. It's eight whiskies, although apparently there's also a ninth whiskey in the offing in the series, and it'd just be a great opportunity for people to taste whiskies like that. I think Keeper's Heart, the whiskey I'm actually drinking now at the moment that's a blend of irish and bourbon whiskies and it's a uh, brian nation a very famous uh, name in irish whiskey is behind and i think they're, they're doing a, a blending work workshop where you can taste the components that went into the blend and then try the whole thing at the end so there's a lot of like a great way to get behind the scenes because tasting those component parts of the blend can often be a great experience where you get to taste oh here's where the, the, the sherry influence came from oh here's where that spiciness came from it's just a great way to build your own knowledge of what you like what makes whiskey tick and just kind of how a blend is put together even if you're just a casual enthusiast never mind a big old nerd like ourselves a great way to just kind of build that knowledge and just really get into the, the, the weeds of something that you really like absolutely and um, those blending workshops are always a fantastic way for for particularly when you have a knowledge base like Brian Nation who are conducting those those classes, even the most experienced uh, whiskey professional will learn something of those, um, which I think is is important. It's not important, but it's for your own knowledge base. You know, every day is a school day. The day you think you know everything about whiskey is the day you, you're going to fail. Um, 
So it's it's always amazing to to meet people like that and and see what they come up with. Um, for any more tips on on whiskey live, because mine is definitely selkage. Eat before you yeah. go. Eat, eat healthily before you go. Um, yeah, it's, it's absolutely like, I'm just having a friend's where we're meeting up for a, a good, we're going on the Saturday evening session, which I understand is, is a bit more, do you know, someone is a bit more generous or flahulic with, with their pores because it's, it's the end of the session that you have to get rid of the bottles. It's only so four sessions. The fourth session. <laughs> the fourth session, exactly. So definitely going for a good brunch that might turn into a dinner that <laughs> we just need to get a good bit of soakage on it because you're there, you're buying your ticket. You go into you want to experience the festival properly. You don't want to end the day either in a bad state or the next day hungover. So going in so good and having that plan because, like I said, like when I went last year, too ambitious, kind of went with with eyes bigger than my stomach and just couldn't couldn't, couldn't enjoy everything. And then there were a few brands that I didn't get to go to. That I, at the end of it, I was thinking I actually I would have liked to see them rather than than the other ones I saw. So mm-hmm. being a bit more like having like your top ten, like they say your A list. And then having your B list and your C list and saying, and not just getting, I'd say, caught up by something. Oh, there's a cool stand. Even though Boan's stand is really cool, if you want to see something else, don't get kind of hooked in by by one thing. If you want to see it, make sure you make time for it because the time will fly. No, get hooked in by everything. Follow follow shiny things like crows. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I mean uh, that's that's a that was a very big thing for me in my in my first whiskey lives was, uh, well, my very first whiskey live was the i think the second whiskey live that was ever in dublin um and i did it by sheer <laughs> i walked in the door and just went to the first stand that was in front of me um so it was um on it was unplanned and at that point that i don't think i think it was like 13 stands or something at whiskey live um but for for i think that true experiences to to do a bit of blinders like you're saying like you know maybe your top three brands just go to where you need to go if it's tipperary boutique distillery or if it's jj Carey, or if it's the red breast stand or method of madness are bringing out something new you have to go and see that and 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 also the idl stands are usually swarmed if it's the red breast the middleton the method of madness the power stands um because usually they have like two to three stands um but they bring like 30 people um like yeah. they're not they're not understaffed and every person they bring is knowledgeable like they have the head blenders um production team they have you know as a couple of times i've seen them bring uh, tour guides from the the brand homes but the tour guides yeah. have been in brand homes like 27 years you know they, they know more about whiskey than you know that's, half, that's half. actually a, a very good point because last year's uh when i was at um i was at, i went to the dingle stand it was middle of the middle of the day and it was very busy and there was you know beardy day there was alan glenn just standing there and some old lad rocks up and goes oh no i'm gonna wait for for, for graham i want to talk to graham about like the history of dingle distillery I'm like so those lads have been there since the beginning, you know. So like, there's there's Dave, you know. I'm just like, oh, I can tell you about that. I said, like, no, no, I only want to talk to Graham. So like, as you said, just because they're a brand ambassador doesn't mean they don't know what they're talking about. Doesn't mean they're not passionate. You know, we're, we're you know, it's a great idea to actually see who's in front of you, talk to them. Don't just get a, like blinkered and say, oh, I only want to talk to Caroline Martin. Or I only want to talk to you know uh, Graham Cool. People in front of you, they're there. They're passionate. And they do know what they're talking about. And on the flip side, don't be afraid to talk to Caroline Martin. And- oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But don't like <laughs> ignore someone who's who's there as a knowledge stand, who's there willing to talk to you, willing, to, especially if you have to wait for. You might as well talk to someone beside you rather than just standing around. Yeah, exactly. Um, don't be afraid. I would say as as, as some of my last points. Uh, don't be afraid of uh, new make. Don't be afraid of single grains. I know some people will turn their noses up. I know you're a big fan of single grains. Um, uh, you know, try try different blends. Try because the people who are at Whiskey Live will generally bring things that they're excited about. Um, so feel free to engage. You know, if you've if you've done your top three and someone looks cool or different or you don't know them, give it a bash. Like, um, go talk to them. Um, there's also uh, water everywhere. Um, so feel free to drag some water around with you as well. Um, yeah. That's key. Wash out the glass. Um, no, I see. I don't know if you've listened from uh, the White Mackay 
his very famous uh, rinse the glass of whiskey and you fuck it on the floor, you know. <laughs> and that's yeah. that currently going like massively viral on TikTok. Um, videos that were recorded 20 years ago and stuff but uh don't be the guy throwing whiskey on the floor uh yeah. but do like, watch that, they will do that at wine fairs like I, I went to a wine fair a while back um and i was like oh how do i and i, I washed out my glass with water i was moving and the uh, the winemaker there just goes no 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 just pour some wine in throw it out and then you're good to go <laughs> like, what are you talking about it's like oh no don't do that with whiskey <laughs> oh it's uh yeah i mean but it's funny because when you're doing these shows, you will find people that you have um, no idea what who they are, or what they do. Um, for instance, I was just in Toulouse this this weekend at a, a whiskey show, and there was a guy with a lot of wine bottles on kind of a small table by himself, and a sign that just said uh, in French, it said, uh, "This is not wine." And I was like, "All right, cool." What? And I went over to talk to him, and he turned out to be a and it was, I actually went to talk to him because was, I wanted to know why there was a guy with a lot of wine bottles that didn't have wine in them. So at a whiskey festival. So I went to talk to him and he turned out to be a Scottish guy who is a winemaker in Perpignan in the like the very south of France on, on the coast of the Spanish border um, who basically has had bad harvests, um, but he owns pot stills and column stills, small ones, farm distilling. Um, for making fruit brandies and stuff. Yeah. Um, and he decided to make um, these incredibly uh, well-made and flavorsome um, mixed mashed will pot stills. Um, okay. And he was like, he's like, yeah, it's an Irish style whiskey. And I was like, I'm familiar. I've <laughs> heard about it once or twice. And it was, um, yeah, his, his core range, it's two years old at the moment, um, but 20% uh, green malt, um, okay. so malt, malted barley that hasn't been kilned, uh, which is very interesting. It has a very different flavor, but also has like much greater diastatic power because you haven't killed away any of those enzymes from the malt or from the kilning process, 60% unmalted barley. And then the remainder was, um, a mixture of oats and wheat. And then he had oh, another wow. one, he had another one, which was that, but in a cherry, a cherry barrel, CH mm -hmm. rather than SH. And then he had another one, which was um, a very similar idea, but instead of, you know, ten percent oats, it was like twenty five percent oats, um, and it was just I incredible. Sean sure. O'Connor would like to get that guy's business card to try <laughs> and find out. Exactly, but it was it was you know ancient pot still whiskey uh, made by a Scottish winemaker in the south of France. It was bizarre and was one of my favorite finds of the the trip. I also found um, gospel whiskey. Um, mm -hmm that I had never heard of before. It was in this like green, almost tincture bottle. I, I hadn't a clue what it was. Um, and it was this really cool guy called Andrew uh, from, I think from Melbourne. Um, and he makes 100% unmalted rye Australian whiskey. 100% unmalted rye? 100% unmalted rye. Throws in a, a bag of enzymes and then away it goes. Um, and that was one of my biggest, you know, those two guys were some of my biggest new finds of the, of the festival, just because one guy had a funny looking bottle and I was like, all right, what's that about? And then yeah. the other guy, well, and then the other guy had it in a wine, they both had funny looking bottles. And that's basically why I wanted to talk to them. <laughs> I didn't know either of them, never heard of them. Um, and went to check them out. Um, and I was two of the best finds I've made in, in a whiskey festival recently. So, you know, go see. Yeah. The, the person you have no idea what they're doing or have a funny looking bottle is my is my advice yeah because like as i said like there are brands you can be familiar with like, everyone knows that middleton is going to be good everyone knows that you know you, you want if you want to try fair be go for it but like if there's someone you see who's maybe a little bit lonely looking pop by see what they're doing you might as you said knows it you might not like what they're doing you might say okay i'll just leave that there but you could find a hidden gem absolutely yeah um and don't don't go uh you know don't go losing stuff don't be don't be the messy one in a whiskey life don't want to be that guy no one wants uh, to be that guy no no one wants to be that guy um there's i mean there's usually a whole exodus mass exodus of people after all these festivals you'll see people from all over the world um yeah, sure. going to this there's usually after whiskey live um a, a mass exodus of of punters to local haunts uh Searsons, yeah. I know, will will have uh 
have a, a good crowd. I'm sure the Palace Bar will have people. I'm sure uh, the Porterhouse Group will have, uh, yeah. have people in them um, in Distilled. I think is that's the new name for and it. It's, it's a nice bar. enough day that like it'll, I assume that the weather will be nice enough there that you might even get people walking down the canal, get a bit of fresh air, get a bit of a break from the whiskey before you move on to a bar like the Barge or something down on the. Might be it might be less packed than uh, than the local bars right around the corner from the ODS, but you know get a bit of fresh air and then. Uh, exactly so if you're if you're gonna give us the one one distillery that you're you're excited to see at whiskey live um this year as a punter who are you, who are you who's who's so, the top list now that you're my top list will i'm gonna i'm gonna pop by boan see I, I i've got pretty much everything they've got released but see if as you said what, what they've got maybe cooking up under the table what they've got maybe coming down the line because i know their own stock is is getting old enough now um, definitely over Cologne, definitely over to Two Stacks. As I said, I want to try out um, Garden County. I want to. I've got a list already that's, that's, that's almost too long, but there's definitely a bunch of brands I want to see. Like the ones I'm kind of familiar with, and the ones I'm 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 looking forward to seeing what they do next. So definitely like some of the smaller ones that I've been looking at on Instagram. I'm looking at on. I'm just seeing what they're what they're up to. What about yourself? Well, I'm going to be working all four sessions, so I don't think I'll be able to. to Not even right. a sneaky. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm head, I'm head down for for most of this, but um, I had, a, you know, I'm, I'm looking to see who's, who's going to be out there, you know. I think one of my, one distillery I think is that maybe doesn't get the, the fanfare that it should. Um, Pierce Lyons always puts on a really good, um, yeah. showing at, at Whiskey Life. Um, they also have this really cool like fumigation box where they, they vaporize their whiskeys. And it comes into kind of a, fa a vapor hood that you can inhale through. Um, I think they had it last year. I know, I know. In general, COVID would have knocked out something like that, but um, that's really cool way to aerosolize. They aerosolize their own whiskeys to give you a you know a different experience. And they've got some great. They've got some great whiskeys, um, and usually a lot of what they have is owned still because they've been distilling since 2012, and people forget yeah. that. Um, but yeah, our former president of the, of the Irish Whiskey Society, uh, Jack O'Shea, he was he, he was a big hand in setting up Pierce Lines, and they do some very good stuff. And it is it's always great to see that kind of connection and the distilleries. If people wanted to find you on Whiskey Live, not to be putting you on a blast, but where would they find you? Oh, uh, listen, you'll be finding me at the Clannacilty Distillery stand, uh, where there will be um, some lovely whiskeys, gin, vodka, and uh, a lot of limited edition whiskeys and upcoming releases uh, you'll be able to find. But I think, as you said, that is also going to be true of, of other distilleries, but yeah. uh, own distilled products as well as um, some fantastically sourced ones as well. Um, so always great to see people come by, say hi. Um, and there's on, nothing under the table, is there? No. Yeah, uh, no, because I think I think all the all the special stuff we're going to keep over the table this time and it'll be a first come, first served uh, job. Might be on the back bar. That's the oh, maybe that's what the, that's what the unlabeled bottles on the back bar, um, and and uh, I'll, I, well, I might make I might make time uh, if I'm not slammed to mosey over and get a marble lane uh, while you're still. <laughs> well, you still. might, might you? <laughs> and what what session are you on the on the tables? The I'm Friday there time? on the Friday. I'm at uh, the Irish Whiskey Society stand on Saturday. I'll just be going around it myself. But if you see me, say hi. Exactly. Well, a very big thank you to yourself and also to our sponsor, Irish Malts, who are the uh, fine people behind not only Irish Malts, but also Three Drams, um, where you can get all of your Irish whiskeys, gins, vodkas, and pudgeens shipped directly to your door anywhere around the world. Where it is legal to do so, this has been uh, the middle cut. So from me, Matt, and you, Matt, uh, a very big thank you. And I will enjoy Whiskey Live, and we'll talk to you next time. Sláinte.